go. The song goes hard. Oh, we just saw this one. Possible. Then one day, some of the household objects that were divided into red and What is going on here? Are those cards? Oh, they're doors. That's a lot of... Tracy was very upset after her husband went missing 20 years ago. Her husband Barry was only 30 when he disappeared. 30. Tracy still used to sit crying, looking through photo albums of better times. She used to find it hard to look at photos of her and her husband, but she wanted to keep his memory alive. Tracy tried different techniques to contact her husband. She different visited techniques. a psychic and even had a seance. But nothing worked. Lately, nothing she had a works. huge urge to dig a hole in her garden at a particular spot. She went out one day into the spot where she had the urge to dig and began digging. Clap. She didn't know where she was getting her energy from, but she kept on digging and digging and digging. It eventually got too dark, so she had to call it a day. The next morning she was out doing the same thing, digging and digging and digging, until eventually when she was Keep over digging. 30 feet down, she came across a door. She wondered what was the door doing over 30 feet underground. She turned the doorknob expecting it to be just the door stuck in the dirt, but what? to her surprise she opened it to a beautiful landscape. She thought she was dreaming, did a man that looked familiar stood in front of her and said, You bitch. Tracy couldn't believe her eyes, you but bitch. knew that the man standing next to her was her husband Barry, who would now be 50. Then suddenly Tracy woke up, thinking what a strange dream. The first thing she'd done, even though she knew it was a dream, was go out to the garden where she dug the huge hole in the dream. Of course there was no hole, but she thought of something. What if she dug a little, not 30 feet, but just a little? She had the urge to dig, what? and she knew she was awake this time. A few minutes later she began digging. She hit something hard and got her start. She bent down on her knees and took away dirt, revealing a hand. Then it all came back to her, what? guessing the dream had unopened the repressed memory of her killing and burying her husband. What? Ow. Usual. A huge hole. It was a lovely summer's day and me and my friend were taking a trip in my private helicopter. What? Everything was going great. We were enjoying the view until we started to fly over my house. What? I noticed something strange. It was like a masked man was carrying my wife to my outside pool to throw <laughs> her in. I quickly told my friend, look below, what's going on? Do you see down below Come there's on. someone carrying my wife into the pool? I quickly flew the helicopter down and saw that a masked man this is was carrying fucking my wife. Same. And just as he got low, we could see him throw her into the pool. He ran away, and when the helicopter eventually landed, <laughs> he was well gone. I ran over to the pool and jumped in, but by the time I did, my wife had already drowned. My friend rang the police for me, and when they came, I told them what had happened. 
we were flying over my house. <laughs> the helicopter's sudden, still on. I could see a masked man carrying my wife and throwing her into the pool. They asked did I have any enemies, but I couldn't think of any. What? My fuck? wife was in the bat, and I walked in, knowing what I had to do. I grabbed her by the neck and put her under the water what until the she fuck, stopped man? breathing. Then, when I knew she had died, I rang the girl of my dreams, who kept at me the last few months to end it with my wife once and for all. It was her plan. When she answered the phone, I told her what to do. It's done. She's dead. But what you need to do is wait until about 3 p.m. tomorrow. Dress up as a man. Put your hair up. I'll convince my friend you're a man. Carry my wife. I'll fly over the house in the helicopter. And when you see us go lower, run up to the swimming pool. I'll fly over the house in the helicopter. And when you see us go lower, Run up to the swimming pool as if my wife was alive until you threw her into the pool. Holy if they shit. think it's a man that drowned her in the swimming pool, there is no way they will trace the real drowning back to me, drowning her in the bat. And remember, the most important thing, baby, is I love you. Jeff was a very nice guy, who wouldn't harm a fly, but one day he met a psychopath, who offered him one million if he wouldn't kill his own twin within three days what? of an experiment. Jeff laughed at the idea, knowing he would never ever harm his twin, as he was the only I don't have a person twin. he truly cared about in the whole wide world, Jeff's parents unfortunately died in a car crash five years ago. Jeff also needed the money to pay off his mortgage and other bills he had outstanding, so the idea of being offered one million for not killing I his wish own I killed twin him. was too good to be true. Use that one Jeff million right now. told his twin Darren about the idea and not Darren saying that said, I would do it. But. Go for it. Jeff knew in his right mind he wouldn't kill his twin, but he feared they would drug him or something to drive him crazy, and he took every precaution his twin would be safe, and then he would collect his million and they both would forget about their crazy plan. The first day the experiment started, Jeff was put into a white room. There was no chair what? or table or anything else, just a plain <clears throat> white room. After a while, Jeff felt dizzy and faint without any food, and the whiteness drove him crazy. Eventually, he tried to lie down to get some sleep, but as soon as he did, loud music came into the room. He didn't even have a clue where the music was coming from, as he saw no speakers. The next day he woke up, Boom, and one of the walls was replaced with a huge mirror, so he could see himself in the mirror. He stared at himself and realized how tired he looked. When he went to sleep, he slept sound until he woke up. Darren's voice filled the room through the hidden speakers. Well done, Jeff. You are doing great. This is day three. You've just a few hours before you collect your million. Good luck. Suddenly, more loud music filled the room, and this time it seemed to be so loud he was wondering oh. why the mirror didn't crack. Suddenly, it stopped, and Darren's voice filled the room again. Okay, Jeff, you're doing extremely good, but you might wonder why the mirror didn't crack. That is because it was reinforced bulletproof glass that wasn't affected by the noise. But there will be a gun appear on the ground just now. You just need to make 10 different movements in the mirror and then shoot your reflection. Then you are free to go. Also, don't be surprised when the glass breaks, as the bulletproof cover to the mirror 
was lifted, so it's just an ordinary mirror now. Jeff made ten different movements, and lifted the gun and Damn. shot the glass. He then froze, <clears throat> when he realised on the other side of the glass, his reflection wasn't him standing holding a gun. It was him lying down dead on the ground. Darren walked into view and said, Well now, Jeff, I guess you won't be getting your one million. You see, I told a little white lie. Maybe, I'm not sure, or was it I left out some very important detail concerning you. That mirror was a mirror, yes, and you were looking at your reflection. But when I had lifted the bulletproof shield, it was the mirror that lifted. What you were looking at, making those ten movements, that you thought was a fraction of you, was really your twin. He had no idea what I said to you, but my twin Jason was telling him that if he copied every move you did in sync with you in the next ten movements, you will be out of here. And you see, he didn't realize I meant you'd be out of here dead. I'm sorry, Jeff. I can't have you walking out here alive and blabbing all about my little experiment. But before I kill you, didn't I tell you I'd make you kill your own twin within three days? Then Darren lifted the gun and shot Jeff in his head. Okay. Yeah, it makes sense. Ah, uh, the fairy fort. We've seen this one. A bunch of times. Joshua was an elderly... <laughs> Sharon was walking down the street, sure that someone was following her. She didn't dare look behind, as she would rather just walk on and hopefully get to somewhere where there were people around other than turn around and have someone attack her. It was getting dark and she saw a train station across the road, so she walked across to it. When she got into the station, thankfully there were other people in the platform, but strangely she didn't feel any bit safer. She thought about getting on a train, but decided to just wait by a group of people first to gather herself. She assumed it was just her paranoia, but there was something bothering her that she didn't know what it was. People were acting strange, <laughs> and she had noticed there were police around. She had wondered why there was no train, as she was standing there for a few minutes now. There were lots of people looking down in the track, across a tape that said police line, do not cross. She didn't realize sooner because she seemed to be in a daze, wondering why she was feeling so strange. She wondered what all the people were looking at, and when she walked over and looked down, she screamed they looking with at? horror as she looked down at herself dead on the train line. What? She was screaming and screaming but no one seemed to take any notice of her. She had then noticed someone had made eye contact with her, and they seemed to notice her. They walked over to her and said, Did you just realize you're like me, one of the dead? She spoke on. Don't worry, it gets better. I watch the news to see what? where there are local deaths. That way at <clears> they're all ghosts in their time. Someone. Sharon froze, taking in the words that the girl was telling her, realizing she was dead. Me and my husband were driving one night, I remember it well, 
As it was snowing heavily, we were driving through the snow, and it seemed to be getting heavier and heavier. I remember my husband saying, Hey sweetie, this snow is getting heavier and heavier. Which that suddenly there was a screech. <laughs> what? Why are you and taking the car skidded on black ice. The car toppled over, but luckily we both survived. We didn't even have to be hospitalized. Luckily. A week later I was looking through getaway breaks, and I thought it a good idea to me and my husband leave our town for a week and go to stay in a cabin in the woods out in Utah. We drove there in a new car that my husband bought because he needed a car to drive to work two miles from where we live. We were driving out to the woods for what seemed like days, but in reality was only hours. When we got there, we were in awe of how beautiful the cabin looked with the trees surrounding it. It was just a beautiful sight. My husband stopped the car and turned off the engine. When we got out, he said, Did you hear that? I said, No. What is it? He smiled and he said, Absolutely beautiful silence. That night we had decided to go for a walk in the woods. My husband heard it first. There were footsteps behind us, but when we turned around, there was nothing. We walked on, then suddenly, I heard it this time. When we turned around, there was a person dressed in black, wearing a hoodie. I screamed, and my husband said, what the hell are you following us for? There was a man's voice. Let's play a game called The Hunt. It's kind of like a game of hide and seek on steroids, or maybe hide and seek on acid. I will give you a head start of 10 seconds to get the hell out of here. And after that, I'm coming after ye with my gun, and I'm going to shoot ye both dead. We didn't bother ask any questions, and just ran and ran as fast as we could. As we were running down the road, I was counting down the seconds, and exactly when I reached ten, I heard running behind us. Suddenly there was a shot, and I fell to the ground in pain. Then the man shouted, This is no fun. Ye can at least make it a little hard for me. I'll tell ye what, I will give the bitch 60 seconds to recover and to get the hell out of here. And after that, I'm coming to hunt ye down and shoot hunt ye Hunt ye down. My husband shouted at him, Get away, you crazy bastard. The man shouted back, Is it a wise idea to re- waste time like that. I eventually got up and put my arm around my husband and after a minute we were just down the road a little bit when my husband screamed as a bullet hit him right in the back of his leg. He buckled down in the ground in pain. The bullet had hit the back of his kneecap. I was screaming as the man walked right up to my husband. Then the man put the gun right to my head and said to my husband, Would you like me to kill your wife? Blood was pouring from my shoulder where I was shot. The man said to me, You have something to tell your husband, don't you? Something about the crash. I said to my husband, I was pregnant. Then the man said, Okay, tell him the real story. Then I turned to my husband and said, Those bullets that were shot at us, well, I got shot by a red paint bullet, and you a got shot by a real bullet. That's why I didn't feel pain Who's putting paint getting bullets shot, even in their guns. though, of course, you thought I did. But you felt the pain. But that pain you're feeling isn't half as bad as when I lost my baby in the car you crashed. The man pointed the gun at my husband and said, My baby you killed. And he shot my husband in his head. Whoa. about that one.
It was a summer's night in a downtown theatre that five people were alone together in the theatre. Did we see this one like the other day? Because they were rehearsing for a very, very dangerous magic trick for the next night. This one is fucking weird. They acted everything out as if the theatre ultimate disappearing act is fake. Is fake. Hello, my name is Martin. It was a sunny day in June. Me and my friends were visiting a local park where there was a very big house and a beautiful garden. The house was open up for visitors to look around and there was a shop and even a restaurant. I am a huge fan of mazes but was never in one in real life. I just did them in books and comics or wherever I came across one. The main reason I wanted to visit this park house was because I knew there was a maze there. When me and my friends arrived at the maze, I was so excited, but I felt that excitement drain Wait, away we fucking... when my friends said I want this one to play, we haven't seen it in a minute. Because they heard a story that one time a boy or age went in there <clears> and was never seen again. Are they talking or are they telling I told the story? Them that it was just a silly urban legend that wasn't true, but they were adamant they weren't going in. I could see the fear in their eyes, and I couldn't understand why. I told them, okay, if you want to spoil the party, that's okay, but I'm going in and enjoying the maze. Besides, if <coughs> anyone was going missing in there, don't you think we would have heard of a lot more people going missing? I walked in it's and pretty was good amazed logic. at how high the ditches were. I could feel the excitement overcome me. I felt that my friends were missing out so much, but suddenly after a half an hour walking around there, I felt for the first time a pang of fear. And a few minutes after that, I wish I hadn't gone in. I shouted out loud to my friends, but all I could hear was the echo of my voice fill the air. I suddenly got the weirdest feeling someone was watching me. I panicked, thinking it was the boy who vanished, who my <laughs> friends were telling me about. I walked around and around and around. I had enough of the maze now. I wanted to get to the exit to get out of it. Suddenly, I heard some shouting, and to my relief, I realized it was my friend Sarah. When I got out of the maze, I acted like I wasn't afraid and said, That maze is so cool. I was walking around for hours, it seemed like, and I genuinely couldn't find my way out. They must have designed this maze so well. That night I was in my room, but that was when the weirdest thing had happened. I walked out of my room, and when I walked into, which should have been my hall, I was in my room again. I suddenly saw a door <laughs> in another direction, and once again when I entered it, I was in my room. This kept happening over and over and over. I just becomes PT. I sense of it because I could look back and see my room and turn around and look in the door and see my room again. I was panicking, thinking of the maze, knowing what was happening to me in there is happening to me right now in my own bedroom. Suddenly I fell over something when I was going through the door. It was a book. I picked it up and the title read, The Maze. I opened it up and read the first page, and a shiver ran up my spine. The publishing date was 2020, and the year at the time was 2010. I looked at the writer's name, and it was my best friend Sarah. Then I read, Ten years ago, my friend entered a maze that me and my friend warned him about and he never was seen again. We had warned him of exactly the same thing happening another boy years ago, who we cannot find out who it is. 
I stopped reading, then jumped when I heard a voice behind me. I turned around. My dad was staring right in front of me. What? And said, Son, don't be afraid. That maze gave you a secret magic that will make up for any friends you may never have seen again. You will understand as time goes on. I know, trust me, I was that other boy that went missing. Crazy. How's that possible? Hi, my name is Siobhan. I was really stressed lately and needed yeah, a break some of the, away, like, early ones so decided to pack really up work for a week and book well myself enough. into a lovely looking hotel in a really nice resort in Florida. Judging by the photos online of it, the place was exactly what I needed. I just needed to get away from everything for a few days, so hopefully a week would do the job. When I had all my luggage packed, I got the cab to the airport and was on my way to Florida. I was so happy knowing I would spend the next week away from all the stress of everything that was going on lately. I was very confident I would feel so much better after the break. When I arrived, I checked in and got the elevator up to my room left my baggage and headed straight for the beach. It was so relaxing just lying down on the beach, with the air blowing in my face. I felt like I was just about to feel the benefits of what I'd feel spending a whole week in this beautiful resort. That night I was in the hotel spa and I was feeling kind of fed up thinking that in a week I'd be back to my ordinary life and the troubles and stress will be waiting right for me. But I knew I just had to make the most of being here. Suddenly a guy walked up to me in the bar and said to me, Hello, I'm very sorry to interrupt you, but I just saw you sitting there and you looked kind of lonely and a bit fed up to be honest. And I was wondering, would you like some company? I looked strangely at first wondering, did I really look that fed up? And then I replied, Well, sure, thanks. I guess I'd enjoy some company. The man asked, So, where are you from? I told him I was from New York and decided I needed to have a break away from the stress in the Big Apple. He smiled and said, Do you know something? That makes a lot of sense to me. And trust me, this place is like a paradise. If you like, I the hell? The audio just fucking die in this one? Got away with it. The since fuck? the police would be looking for his body. The audio just gone. Two police officers were driving down the road on a quiet summer night when they spotted something strange. There was a car stopped at the side of the road, but it was in a position that a car shouldn't stop in since it was out in the middle of the road. Two of the police officers walked around to the car to investigate and they nearly got sick when they realized what they saw. They had seen a woman lying lifeless inside the car with towels stuffed into her body and most of her organs removed. One of the police officers what? turned around and got sick, but the <laughs> other was more experienced and was used to seeing sick things. So other guy just takes out a fucking his notebook notepad. and started writing down notes. Then he ran back to the station to <laughs> call in the crime scene. The police Guy officers explodes. wondered what type of sick person could do that to sick anyone. Fuck. They wondered was it some dark ritual or even a sacrifice taking the baby out of the body. 
because there were really, really strange stories around the town for years and years of witchcraft rituals in the woods, and this road was by the woods. When they went back to investigate more looking into the car, they felt a strange presence. And when they looked back into the back seat, they froze in fear of what they saw. They turned around and saw a baby stare at them, and not cry or whimper, but they still knew the baby was alive. They couldn't comprehend how the baby got into the car, and also wondered how the baby could have survived being taken out of the mother's body. The two officers seemed to be in a daze. When they took the baby out of the car, what? one of the officers realized there was a newspaper article stuck in the baby's hand. What? It was as if the baby was clutching onto it for dear life. The newspaper article was about a serial killer that died in prison two days ago. The baby before his death, had the newspaper. He obsessed with being reborn through a human sacrifice. It sounded sick, so what? he didn't read on. The One of the fuck? officers had a crazy idea he didn't tell anyone, but since he had the opportunity, he went ahead with it. And knew people in the right places, so he got someone to run a DNA test on the baby. A shiver ran up his spine. When he realized, a hit came up on file, which was the same match as the murderer who wrote the notes about being reborn through a human sacrifice. What? Baby, what the fuck are you doing with this newspaper? I'm reading the newspaper. Hello, my name is Jake. I used to get upset over my daughter Sarah's last boyfriend, Fred, oh as he was an ex-convict, so was it hard Jake to blame me? I mean, what father would be delighted with their daughter going out with an ex-convict? He was in for drug dealing, and the thing is, she has moved on, but to be honest, her new boyfriend is worse. The first day I met him, me and my daughter and wife and her new boyfriend Tom were having a meal. Tom just gave me a cold stare and there was something dark and void in his eyes. My wife and daughter hadn't seen it, but I knew he was hiding something. I don't know what, I don't know how big, but I just knew. I tried telling my daughter, sweetie, I know that you think you know Tom, but are you really sure you really know him? Are you sure I mean, you really put it know him? this way, he doesn't seem to talk about his family much. My daughter cut me off. Yeah, what Vigo Morrison movie is that? I gotta watch that again. It was a great movie. And everyone I go out with. Tom is it's a It's like the original John Wick guy, movie, basically. It's like the same plot as John Wick. Last few months, and especially kind of. since Fred really. has become a crazed stalker who just won't get it into his head that I am over him and don't want anything to do with him. Tom has told him to back off, and to be honest, I don't think he would have, only for Tom frightening him or whatever he did to get him to back off. I was really scared my daughter was going to get into trouble with this stranger Tom, so I used it to my advantage what she had just told me about Tom frightening her ex Fred. I said to my daughter, well there you go sweetie, you don't know what he did to Fred, did he threaten to kill him or did he have him beaten up? I mean let's face it, Fred doesn't seem the type of guy to just back off. You were months trying to get him to stop stalking you. I was hoping to find something to prove I was right about my daughter's new boyfriend Tom, so I did some research and typed his name into the search engine. Millions of results came up, so I tried doing the image search of him and the town and the company he is meant to work for. I was hoping he wouldn't appear at all, that he was just giving a false name and he would be cut out way before anything bad happened to my daughter. But my hopes were dashed when his face popped up. Things came to a head one Friday night 
when me and my daughter went to Tom's house. She was delighted I had accepted to go to his house for a meal. My daughter went in and had just realized I'd left my phone in my car, so I went out and fetched it. A few seconds later, I heard a gunshot from inside Tom's house, no. and my heart started racing. I ran into the house and saw my daughter crying inside there. I told her, get back. I had a gun with me at all times for protection, and my daughter knew about it. I told my daughter to stand back, and I kicked the door in, and could see my daughter's ex bleeding to death on the ground. Tom was standing there shouting. I shot him in the head and explained to my daughter. I had to, as he had his gun held to my head and was going to kill me. My daughter rang the police, and while I was waiting I saw her on the laptop and asked her what she was looking at. She told me, Don't worry, Tom has CCTV inside the house and outside. I'll be what able the to fuck? show the police that you just History shot of violence. Is that what it was called? I Again, can't I remember. I noticed I could see my hand go in the window while I was pretending to fetch yeah, that my movie phone. Was great. But I had went around knowing the window was open. All was ajar. It was a habit Tom had that was a real advantage to me. I was seen holding the gun in the window to the back of him and shooting Fred. My daughter knew now that it was me who shot Fred and I had planned to burst the door open pretending to have had to kill Tom before he had killed me. My plan was ruined now. That's why I knew what I had to do before the police came. I knew they would know that it was me that purposely set up Tom to look like the killer that killed Fred. But it was really me. And it was really me who killed Tom because I wanted to, not because it was self-defense. And I knew what I had to do before the police came. So I held the gun up to my daughter and pulled the trigger. Damn. Delete that file. What we've seen recently. Jake was watching. Jake was watching. Let's watch something else. <clears throat> Let's watch something else. Oh, there's a new Dr. Bob. A young woman is spending the morning in town, completing hey, a few errands she's been meaning to get to for a while. She picks up a few items from the supermarket, gets the cracked screen on her smartphone repaired, and decides to treat herself to a Danish from a local bakery. It's a relatively idyllic Tuesday, until she turns the corner into a narrow side street and sees them. It can often be a little disconcerting to suddenly find yourself staring at a crowd that is gathered for seemingly no reason, but something about this one makes her particularly nervous, and she quickly realizes why. Each person in the tightly packed together group is grinning, as if they are all in on a particularly cruel joke about her. At face value, they all seem to be very different people. A collage of ages, races, genders, in different clothes with different styles. And yet, they're all walking with perfect synchronicity. One perfectly timed footfall at a time. This is enough to seriously creep her out. Whatever this strange group of people is doing, she wants no part of it. Instead, she turns and heads in the opposite direction, fast walking and stealing discreet but frequent glances over her shoulder. She can't help but notice, even when the crowd exits the small side street, that they remain huddled together, like security guards packed tight around some invisible VIP. And even worse, they seem to be following her trajectory, getting faster, getting closer, still perfectly in sync with one another. How are all these people gaining so fast, she thinks to herself. When she's around a corner and out of sight, she does the sensible thing and breaks into a sprint, eager to put some distance between herself and them. Even though they haven't shown any signs of overt aggression, she can tell on some visceral level that they mean her great harm. She knows if ever they get close enough, within grasping distance, something terrible will happen. She's soon back at her home and locks herself in, bolting the door behind her. She breathes a sigh, but she's not relieved, not really. Maybe she's paranoid, but 
she feels like she isn't out of the woods just yet. Those eerie smiles, those perfect footsteps, she can't get them out of her mind. She slips into her kitchen and slides a knife out of the block. She tells herself that doing this is a little crazy, but having some kind of weapon in hand makes her feel at least a little bit safer. But whatever the feelings of comfort the knife gives her are shattered when she hears the doorbell ring. She hadn't ordered anything. She wasn't expecting anyone. Who could that be? She hides the knife behind her back and makes her way towards the door. Ding dong, it rings again. Whoever Ding is dong. on the other side is getting impatient. She opens the door slightly, but leaves the chain in place. There's a smiling man in a business suit on the other side. She's racking her brain, trying to remember. Is he one of the people from the crowd? Or is she just imagining things because she's freaked out? She can't tell anymore. She can feel her palm getting sweaty around the knife's handle. The man at the door clears his throat and says, Excuse me, ma'am, I won't take up too much of your time, but I wanted to ask, have you heard the good word? She shakes her head and tells the stranger that she isn't interested in hearing his pitch, but he just keeps smiling and presses on. Do you ever feel lonely, dissatisfied, unfulfilled? Don't you ever wish that you could become a part of something bigger than yourself? It'd be a real weight off your shoulders. She's starting to run out of polite ways to deny him when she hears a faint tapping against the nearby glass. The young woman turns her head and looks into her living room. There's a smiling woman standing at the window, rapping on the glass with her knuckles, grinning. The chill sets in immediately. She recognizes that face with absolute certainty. It's one of the people from the crowd, and now she knows for sure that the man at the door is too. But when she turns back to him, all she sees is his hand reaching through the gap in the door for her. She screams and backs away, instinctively slashing the knife at him. Two fingers fall to the floor, but there's Damn. no blood, just thick flesh-colored pus dripping from the two stumps. The hand doesn't even flinch. It keeps reaching, and soon, the gap in the door is crowded with the faces of even more grinning human figures. She turns and runs as the sheer collected momentum of the crowd forces open the door. They spill into the hallway, tumbling over each other, but still smiling. She notices something trailing out of their clothes, long, sinewy ropes that look like they're made of living flesh, wriggling and pumping with each passing second. This whole situation seems to just be getting worse and worse. Thinking quickly, she decides to flee up the stairs. If she gets to her bedroom fast enough, she can lock her door from the inside, open the window, and climb down the trellis into the yard before they can break in. In that moment, it seems like the best course of action, but only because she has no idea just how quickly the crowd can close the distance. In an instant, the crowd is up onto the stairs and following her, extending their grasping hands in unison. Who are these people? Why are they doing this? The questions that flood her mind are soon forced out by the shock of the grinning stranger in the business suit, pulling her into a powerful bear hug. He squeezes hard, and she can feel it in her muscles and bones. She wriggles for her life, but she can't resist his strength. The rest of the crowd reaches for her. She spots those awful fleshy cords again, emerging from the backs of all these terrifying strangers. And now she sees what they're all leading back to, a giant, formless blob of flesh, like some corrupted, unknown organ, a huge, monstrous tumor. It pulses and throbs. Just looking at it makes her want to be sick, and she can feel the most horrible energy coming off of it. Whatever this thing is, it wants her. It's reaching for her. Fight or flight kicks in, and this time flight isn't an option. The stranger in the suit has a good grip on her, in spite of his missing fingers, but she's still got the knife. She can see the cord trailing from his back into the giant flesh blob, and with one decisive strike, she severs it with the kitchen knife. Immediately, the man in the suit lets go of her. Both ends of the cord flop down, spraying more of the, the flesh-colored pus. Going on? But the effect on the man himself is even more drastic. He flails around, making the most horrible, guttural, gurgling noises she's ever heard. He heaves and vomits out gallons of the pus. It sprays from his eyes and nose like a fire hose. It oozes down and out of his pant legs. His body deflates like a punctured balloon as the awful substance Can't cascades leg. out of him until all that's left is a wet, vacant sack of skin and clothes quivering on the floor. But she doesn't have time to dwell on the horrors she's just witnessed. She needs to get out of here, now. She turns and continues running up the stairs as the crowd regroups and begins chasing her. She can hear their perfectly synchronized footsteps sloshing through the liquids of their fallen member. They have barely even slowed down. She keeps running, she just needs to keep running. A number of hands close around her body. Several of them clamp around her wrist, squeezing tight until the knife falls from her hand and clatters to the ground. They've learned already. The crowd rises up and closes around her. No matter how hard she struggles, they won't budge. They just keep huddling in. 
She can hear the giant pulsing mass of flesh closing in behind her. She feels one of those long fleshy cords slithering up her back, its fibrous strands easing their way into her flesh until the connection is made. Her eyes roll up into her head as it pumps the <laughs> fluid into her body, melting away everything inside. Now you're just another the uh, same nightmare of the pod people that she'd just seen splattering out of the man in the business suit moments ago. Little by little, everything that was once her is hollowed out, filled in, and painted over. Once the transformation is complete, she smiles, just like all the others. But she's not she anymore. She's just another part of it, its newest addition a replacement for the man in the suit. The crowd leaves shortly after, keeping perfect step, looking for some new It's friends. like the point of that, though. At some point, everyone has felt the desire to fit in, but one anomaly takes the desire to join the throng to its ultimate extreme. This is SCP-428, also known as the crowd. In its purest state, ah. SCP-428 is an amorphous mass of flesh connected to a number of human hosts with organic tendrils, similar to umbilical cords. The central mass is obscured by its multiple human hosts, numbering 14 at the present moment, and it is an extremely dangerous entity. Once an individual is assimilated into its mass, they are to be considered lost. Upon assimilation, all of the victim's complex internal structures, bones, musculature, organs, nervous system, are instead replaced by material similar in composition to the amorphous mass that controls them. All that remains is their skin and Just vague glue. shape, being piloted by the SCP-428 hub. When not actively seeking new victims to assimilate, SCP-428 enters a dormant state, its assimilated victims standing in a circle around the hub, audibly mumbling to one another and swaying gently. SCP-428 and its crowd will enter a hostile state if anyone travels within two meters of it, with surprising speed and ferocity, members of the crowd will try to mob the unfortunate victim in a sudden ambush, bringing them into the proximity of the hub. If they remain in this state for over 10 seconds, a cord will attach to their body and their vital systems will be replaced, and they will be assimilated into the crowd, just like the other victims of SCP-428 were before them. If, however, the victim somehow manages to escape before the process is complete, this will not be the end of their ordeal. Should someone evade its attention, SCP-428 and the crowd will enter a period of active hunting behavior to seek out the escaping victim. Failing that, they will try to assimilate any human wandering into their vicinity. There is no safe way to approach SCP-428 or any of its members under any circumstances. To do so is to court a fate worse than death. When a victim is assimilated, SCP-428 like and the crowd will return to a dormant state until another victim presents itself. Foundation studies have determined that SCP-428 seeks to add at least one person to its crowd every month, and if a person is not provided, then it will engage in hunting behavior, putting everyone in the area in grave danger. SCP-428 isn't controlling a gaggle of mindless zombies, though. It is an extremely intelligent hive mind, made all the more frightening by the fact that it absorbs the knowledge, memories, and skills of each of its victims, and can reapply them through any of the others. Because of this, it appears to have incredibly adept knowledge of the human mind and will happily resort to using tactics of psychological manipulation to gain an advantage. Despite being a large crowd, tests have shown that SCP-428 and its assimilated it reminds me of can like, move uh, terrifyingly fast. This a little is because, bit. due to the very nature of the perfectly attuned hive mind, they can walk or run in perfect synchronicity. To best understand this, picture a centipede skittering at great speed across a wall so many yeah. legs, but all sharing a perfectly coordinated nervous system, working together to move the creature with military precision. Even individually, each member of the crowd is a formidable foe. Once they become part of SCP-428, they exhibit greatly increased strength, they show no signs of feeling pain, and also have the ability to quickly heal any injuries. Wounds also do not seem to impede function whatsoever. A member of the crowd getting shot in the leg won't slow it down in the slightest. However, while this creature is incredibly intelligent and dangerous, the same can be said for the SCP Foundation. And in the time since they discovered it, they have ascertained a few weaknesses, even though some of this knowledge came at a heavy cost. Though members of the crowd appear significantly resistant to damage, the SCP-428 hub itself appears to be vulnerable to attack and more than capable of feeling pain. It looks like if one the of the Octorot things from uh, that would cause Elden Ring. Pain, every member of the crowd is able to feel it often collapsing and writhing around in agony. When the creature collects itself, 
it will retreat, guarded by its human shields. The Foundation has used this method to corral the creature back into containment during breaches, with the controlled applications of fire or electricity being favorite methods of Foundation security forces. Severing the connection between a member of the crowd and the central hub is also a surefire way to weaken the overall ability of SCP-428. A severed crowd member will immediately collapse, the SCP-428 material inside it liquefying and excreting from every orifice. This may intensify it reminds me of SCP that movie from the 80s this stuff. to discover a new victim, but it can also be used as a method of population control for the crowd itself. There has been one major incident concerning SCP-428 since its containment They're at the SCP like Foundation and, and it acted as a painful reminder to all staff that one should never underestimate the abilities of the anomalies they contain. Evidently, one of the people assimilated by SCP-428 in the past was skilled in the art of lockpicking, as SCP-428 had absorbed this skill. It took apart one of its members' belts and used the pieces to pick the lock of its containment chamber from the inside. It then positioned one of its female victims, crouching just outside the door, the cord slithering through the crack in the door behind her. She fell to her knees and began to weep loudly, attracting the attention of a nearby researcher. Naturally, when you hear a distressed person crying, it's human instinct to go investigate and help, and this particular researcher hadn't been briefed on the nature and abilities of SCP-428, which left him completely unprepared oh, for the horrifying fate that awaited him. As he leaned in to comfort the crying woman, the rest of the crowd immediately emerged from the containment chamber's door, mobbing him. One forced its hand over his mouth, up, stifling man. his frightened scream as he was pulled in and quickly assimilated. While SCP-428 could pick locks, absorbing a member of SCP Foundation staff, both giving it access to the Foundation site layouts and inner workings, as well as a presentable frontman to assuage suspicion, was like getting its fleshy tendrils on a kind of master key. SCP-428 and its crowd, with the assimilated researcher at the head, progressed through the building, avoiding key security checkpoints and absorbing several other researchers and guards along the way. This was a particularly frightening development, as it allowed SCP-428 to further expand both its knowledge of the SCP Foundation and its skills in everything from science to armed and hand-to-hand -hand combat. With every new person it took in, it grew significantly stronger and more dangerous to Foundation personnel. Thankfully, it drew the right kind of attention before it had a chance to escape the containment site proper. A mobile task force was dispatched to contain SCP-428 and the crowd and force it back into its containment chamber. However, being an extremely persistent creature, this minor setback didn't do anything to quell its desire to escape. Given that several members of its crowd were now ex-Foundation staff members, it tried to leverage this in order to manipulate the people guarding its chamber. This became Blow such a problem that a researcher appended a note to its file, reading, People, these casualties are gone. They are SCP-428 now. No matter what it might say or do, they are not your work colleagues nor your friends anymore. Remember this, it may save your life. SCP-428 and its crowd is currently contained in a 5 meter by 5 meter by 5 meter cell, with walls electrified to 30,000 volts to discourage attempts by members of the crowd to break or climb them. The cell is accessed via an airlock, and entry is restricted to level 3 researchers and below, while escorted by two armed guards in order to eliminate the risk of SCP-428 absorbing a valuable asset to the SCP Foundation and coming into possession of truly catastrophic knowledge and skills as a result. That Just Dr. imagine Bobby's the disastrous kind of results if, say, a member of the O5 Council were suddenly a part of SCP-428. Researchers are to remain a minimum of eh, two meters away at all I'd times, it. and it is mandatory for at least two armed guards to stay posted at the chamber's entrance at all times. SCP-428 is to be given one member of D-Class personnel to assimilate Just every single you, uh, month get in order to somewhere prevent easy. it from engaging in hunting behavior. Due to SCP-428's frightening ability to absorb memories, skills, and intelligence, all D-classes given to 428 are screened for low intelligence and a lack of valuable skills to ensure that the anomaly isn't being given any new aces up its sleeves. However, continually giving SCP-428 new victims is going to increase its overall size and thus necessitate gradual containment upgrades. The possibility of permanently neutralizing SCP-428 is being explored, but in the meantime, it has been given the Euclid Object class, because of its intelligence, skills, and unpredictability. While the SCP Foundation is all about sacrificing the individual for the greater good, this is one frightening collective that they couldn't endorse becoming a part of. Now go and watch another entry from the classified files of Dr. Bob, such as SCP-4910, The Grinner, for another anomaly that wants to alter your body and not for the good. And make sure you subscribe and turn on notifications not so you're for the good.
All right, here's a link to that. Yeah, maybe just kill it. Or, uh, shoot it into space. Put it into the sun or something. I don't know. Blow that shit up. Something? Um... <clears throat> An anomaly that wants to alter your body for the good? Probably not. Not for your good. At least. Check their trail camera for signs of game. They were shocked at what they saw. Taken in February 2014, a number of unsettling images were captured on the family's hunting hand. camera. It's an old video. Over a span of 40 minutes, a series of strange objects appeared on the horizon. They gradually got brighter and brighter until this image was captured. It shows what looks like headlights, but they're clearly hovering in the air. The camera shoots in infrared, but inexplicably the deer is lit up. Some internet commentators have offered the theory that it's the deer's eyes illuminating into the camera, creating a strange effect with the light. However, when the image is adjusted, it shows that the deer is looking away from the camera. A CNN reporter went to investigate the site where the footage was taken. There are no roads or clear explanation for the hovering lights. The farmer thought it may have been a government drone, but other than that, he is dumbfounded by the event. When this photo was captured by a trail camera in early 2013, the internet was abuzz with theories. The strange hairless creature surely is mysterious. Many thought it was proof of El Chupacabra, a beast from American folklore that sucks the blood from helpless animals. Others thought it was a mutated hybrid animal that had never been seen before. Then there's the more grounded opinions that this is simply a coyote suffering from mange. Whatever the case may be, it makes for a fascinating image. Let us know your thoughts in the comments section below. In the summer of 2011, a homeowner in northern was Georgia was noticing strange lights coming from the woods at the rear of his property. After alerting authorities, he was advised that it may be illegal raccoon hunters that had been spotted in the area. Frustrated, the homeowner placed several trail cameras around the property to catch the intruders. After reviewing some of the photos, the owner was stunned at what he saw. This photo shows some kind of glowing figure wandering through the woods. It has an outstretched hand holding a stick or wand. It looks as though a trail of light is emanating from the back of the wand. humanoid figure. The trees are reflecting the light as well. Some say this is a doomed spirit forced to wander the woods. Others think it's a fairy or entity from another dimension. Whatever the case may be, there is yet to be a plausible <laughs> scientific explanation for this image. It's like a super exposed There's person. There's not a lot of solid information on where this photo was taken. It shows a hooded figure carrying a scythe in the middle of the forest. His hand looks eerily skeletal and his face is blurred white. Many have said that this is the Grim Reaper himself looking for souls to take to the afterlife. This photo could have easily been staged. The owner of the camera or someone who knew about the camera's location could have dressed up and posed for the photo. If that's the case, kudos to the outfit. It's made for a very chilling image. And if it's not the case, and it's death himself, well then I may have just peed a little. This photo, taken in August 2012, shows a strange figure in the middle of the woods. The camera, which is motion activated, captures images in infrared, so there's no lighting to scare game away. The hunter that owns the camera said it was placed 5 miles from the nearest house and 10 miles from the nearest town. But there, close to midnight, is a robed person Wait, kneeling really down in the middle of the forest. Some theories suggest it's a member of the occult practicing wicker alone in the woods. Others have noted That's that it, it That's almost the looks only like the person them? is eating something while they're kneeling on the ground. Maybe they're taking a shit. Which has led some to think that this is a zombie. Again, this could have easily have been staged. What do you think this is? Why would anyone be wandering the woods late at night miles from the nearest town? Let us know your thoughts in the comments section below. This probably isn't the kind of big buck you want to see on your trail camera. A half-naked dude with a bulbous belly button roaming your property. Jesus, that scared the shit out of me. This image that surfaced in 2014 is allegedly a heat signature of a bizarre animal captured by a geologist working in a New Mexico oil field. 
Many claim this monster this to fucking be a picture, skinwalker, dude. a mythical oh creature God. from Native American legend that has the ability to shapeshift into any animal it chooses. I've seen this so Others many times. believe it to be a hoax, claiming it's a still from a little-known 1980s science fiction film. What do you think, hoax or yeah, proof from that the a movie. skinwalker is prowling the oil fields of New Mexico? There is next to no information available. But that about picture this photo, has been put into so many things. It's a, hoax. it's a deer lit up like by if, an infrared uh, hunting so many camera, games, but in the background like is a chilling Google image of a spectral like scary figure picture, rising put that out in of there. the brush. It looks as though yeah, it's, it's screaming in agony. I'll put this one down as it's most like likely actually like a Photoshop job. Cool but if you have any information on this photo, please let us know in the comments section below. This photo has been doing the internet rounds for a few oh, years on. now. Captured in 2009, it shows a young boy wandering through the woods late at night. He looks entranced with glowing wide eyes. From his posture, it looks as though he's shuffling awkwardly, possibly injured. What is this kid doing all alone in the middle of the forest? Is he sleepwalking or is it something far more sinister? Maybe it's a zombie or way Also, spirit. one frame of a thing. a ghost captured on film, it has incredible detail that's normally missing Like a random picture photos. of you when you're not or expecting to have a picture taken of you. It looks so fucking weird sometimes. Tricks. It oh would appear this slew of clown sightings across North America Damn, may have sick. started earlier than first thought. On August 30, 2009, this trail camera detected movement mid-morning and started capturing Looks images. like it has, like, air inside of it. When the owner it. reviewed the picture, like one of those, he was like, shocked sumo to discover a clown outfits. had been roaming his property. The camera was placed in the middle of the woods, miles from the nearest town. Why would a fully dressed clown be stalking the woods that early in the morning? Even if it was some local playing tricks on the hunter, it still means they were dressed as a clown deep in the woods. That on its own is creepy enough. This unsettling trail camera picture shows a little girl lost in the middle of the woods. In the foreground, a large, well -hoped All these box stares pictures are just like people camera. staging them. A doe, them. strangely unafraid, is looking straight at the young girl. It's odd that they're all standing so close to one another. Normally, deer are easily startled and will never stand that close to humans. The girl or, looks barefoot and it could dazed. be two pictures put together. Unfortunately, there's no solid information about this picture. There is a chance this camera is set up near a campsite, and the girl may have just been curious. That deer about looking the at the camera. But still, it's scary enough for a girl that young to be so close to a buck of that size in the middle of the night. What do you think is happening in this picture? Let us know in the comment section below. I mean, that's the when point this photo of a trail camera. To Reddit so in 2012, the forum went into animals. a frenzy of speculation. What's now known as yeah, the Wisconsin those trail are cam never mystery, really good resolution, this startling but... image has baffled analysts for years. So funny. The shambling creature seems to be wearing Just basically to tell you that the hood you know, there's over animals there, there. shoulders. The fuck? Some have noted the footprints running across the ground as if the beast is tracking them. There's been no reasonable explanation for this image. Opinions range from a Wendigo to a zombie or even a lost soul forced to eternally wander the woods. Some have said that it's a smear on the lens of the camera or just a person with a sheet draped over them. Whatever the case may be, this is one of the most baffling trail cam pictures ever taken. So what do you think these trail cams have captured? Is it all a big hoax or something far That's more pretty sinister? Short. Let us know in the comments section below and we'll have a- The video is from 2017. It was 10 years ago. Kind of crazy. Hmm. In. It was reportedly captured somewhere in Russia and appears to have been filmed on security cameras. Preachers. However, the details surrounding the video are sketchy at best. The two men look as though they're dressed in military uniforms and are standing guard at some sort of base or installation located close to a large body of water. Shortly into the video, some sort of creature lunges at the man on what? the right of screen and attempts to pull him into the water. You cannot tell the second man what the fuck is going on aid, here. But is unable to help and runs into the base. That does the not look real. dragged off screen by the beast. That looks Seconds fake as fuck. Before his friend returns. When he does, he appears to be making a phone call as he frantically searches for his lost comrade. He suddenly spots something coming towards him as he makes a dash for the safety of the base. A split second later, something very large flies through the door. It's like a found it footage slow the footage down, movie or something. It's difficult to make out exactly what it is, but it's probably either the creature or the man that was dragged into the water. 
A second or two pass and a tall figure emerges from the door. The figure is dressed in a long dark robe and can be seen pulling a hood over their head as they calmly leave the scene. What on earth is going on in this clip? What type of beast has the strength to pull a fully grown man into the water? And then, who or what is the dark figure seen leaving afterwards? Is it possible that the creature was some sort of mysterious shapeshifter? Love to hear your thoughts on this one in the comments section below. Someone's like fucking movie. This video shot in an unknown oh, GTA location too. appears to show some sort of creature that has the ability to levitate. While the footage quality is poor, you can make out that the animal is about two feet tall. It seems to walk on its hind legs and partly resembles what? a penguin. Shortly into the video, what? the creature suddenly starts floating effortlessly into the air. It elevates above the camera for a brief moment before re-entering the frame. As it does, it slowly hovers back to the ground then continues walking along the road. The creature can't be a penguin as they are flightless. The way it seems to hover through the air is unlike any Bro. other bird we've ever seen. Whatever it is, the it fucking sure makes resolution of this is video. abysmal. It's like a music video. This video begins with a man sitting in his car about to record a message on his camera. Just as he begins, he becomes distracted by something out in the parking lot. It's dark and stormy outside and you can just make out a strange shape lurking in the shadows as the rain runs down the car window. Then suddenly some sort of creature runs towards the vehicle. The animal moves fast, running on all fours. It enters the light for a split second as it makes a dash for the car. If you slow the footage down, you can see the creature appears to move similar to a chimpanzee. It can be heard leaping Dude. onto the vehicle as it disappears from Cannot view. tell uh, what anything is in this video, are you kidding me? Shakes. Viewers of this footage have been quick to offer their opinions about... It's always hilarious when they use the stock be. footage next Some to the, the found footage, and it's just like... Actually be a werewolf. The, the contrast the is never so formally stark. Identified, the mystery of whatever attacked this man may never be solved. This video, captured in an unknown location, shows some sort of mysterious creature hiding behind a Alien tree. Alien hiding in the woods. As the man with the camera approaches the tree, the creature can be seen... Yeah, this filter has been on the whole time, hasn't it? ...between the branches. When the footage first surfaced, many noted that the creature looked very much like an alien grey. It has a giant head, a thin gaunt-looking body, and large black eyes. While there's very little information Alien hide about a tree. the clip, it was obviously captured in some sort of wooded area, possibly a forest or even a park. Could it be possible that this mysterious creature is actually an alien from another world? If so, why does it appear to be all alone in the woods in the middle of the night? This bizarre mm. footage was captured by a research vessel at an ocean depth of around 3,700 feet. The Good camera question. begins to focus on a black circular object as it drifts along with the Yeah, she's an alien currents. trying to survive. When the camera zooms in she's for trying to live, man. inspection, the object appears to be flat and lifeless. Suddenly, the object appears to what? shrink, then rapidly expand into something that looks similar to a squid or even a cuttlefish. In less than a second, the creature is more than quadrupled in size. The camera zooms in again as multicolored lights begin it literally to literally is a cuttlefish. The mouth of the beast. It drifts by for a few more seconds before propelling out of view. They can do that. When the video was first released, Dude, there are literally RGB the like fish some sort of alien. and other creatures. However, so and it looks the like they have like lights inside of them. It's not even that crazy. It's lurking in the depths just waiting to be discovered. In 2017, this video emerged from Zhangjiaku City in China's northern Hebei province dragon that skeletons. reportedly shows the skeletal remains of a dragon. When the footage was released, it immediately went viral with the clip garnering more no. than 10 million views in just a few days. Many are convinced that the skeleton seen is that of a legendary Chinese dragon. How would it be like However, so complete? However, others are not so sure. Several viewers pointed out that the skull of the dragon looks as though it could be made out of the bones of a cow. Even though it's unclear exactly where or even how the bones were discovered, many people from the surrounding area managed to gather to catch a glimpse of the find. Could it actually be the skeleton of a real dragon, or is it just a clever hoax? Until further research is conducted on the bones, the answer will remain a mystery. <laughs> like, what the fuck is going on here? At first, this video appears to have captured... I don't know the story behind that. 
just some mundane footage of someone's backyard. The they quality just is had low a bunch of the person fucking bones. The it was probably for like something else, and still. like it's being misrepresented. A few in, however, the gnome in the white like for a movie or move. something. It turns to the side and shuffles off behind a flower pot. While the shaky style in which the clip is filmed could be an intentional ploy to cover up some subpar special effects, it could also be that the camera holder is shaking because they are genuinely shocked at what they're seeing. <laughs> the fact that there's also no the camera is shaking because the they're shocked about the makes gnome. It even more mysterious. The gnome looks real enough, but what do you think? Could it actually <sighs> be a living garden gnome, or is it simply special effects magic? Yes. I wouldn't even say that special effects. Are you kidding me? This video was uploaded to All In One's YouTube channel in 2016. The cameraman was filming what he thought was a bird in the skies over Pennsylvania, but he soon realized that the creature was much larger. It's a gargoyle. If you look closely, it appears to resemble a pterosaur, a giant what? flying reptile that became extinct around the same time as the dinosaurs. It's a fucking Pokemon. Others have noted the large wings and long tail of the creature, suggesting that it may actually be a dragon. While the poor video quality <laughs> makes it difficult to definitively identify the beast, one thing's for sure. Whatever it is, it's far too big to be a bird. It's a dragon. Dragon these to nuts. Real paranormal videos in 2016, this video has reportedly captured evidence Whoa. of a live dinosaur. I don't know it's about that one. to make out the creature in any detail as it moves fast and only appears on camera for a brief moment before running behind a thicket of reeds. However, unlike many of the other videos on this list, this footage is actually dinosaurs just quality. living in the woods. If you zoom in on the creature, you can definitely see the resemblance Come of a the fuck on. like those seen in the Jurassic Park films. That was awful. Looking. Today, many people believe that some dinosaurs may still exist in areas untouched by humans. Sightings have been reported all over the globe, from the jungles of South America to the Congo Basin in Central Africa. Even the Loch Ness Monster of Scotland is believed by some to be an ancient plesiosaur. Hell Could yeah. dinosaurs still be roaming the earth? Let us know what you think in the comments section below. Alright. Before we get to that number one spot and take a look at some footage of what many are calling an alien shapeshifter, remember to hit it in Northern Chile in an area that's supposedly home to many strange creatures. Locals believe that the caves in this area are actually home to a race of alien shapeshifters. They say that these shapeshifters have the ability to turn themselves into dogs, which allows them to explore the nearby beaches for food. Once <laughs> He's asking me to comment the a lot. Of the caves, however, like seven comments. Take on their true Dude, if I left a comment every time you asked me to. From this footage, it appears that they look oh like my some God. sort of large goat-like animal. They have large backward-facing horns and long, sharply clawed limbs. For a brief second, you can catch a glimpse of the creature's face. It looks similar to that of a dragon with rows of sharp, pointy teeth. What Its the eyes fuck? are multicolored and seem to glow in the dark. Many believe that the reason these alien creatures Look, have it's remained like undetected nose. for so long is that the area in which they live is remote and rarely visited by humans. Would love to get your opinion on this one. Do you yeah, think it's got some LED eyes, no big deal. The caves of Northern He's Chile a gamer. are home to a race of mysterious alien shapes. Or if he's got a 3080 in there. Or is it all just an elaborate hoax? I think that one was real. That's the end of another episode. Pretty sure that was real. So much for watching. Remember yeah, that monster was real. I'm getting confirmation. He was indeed real. That monster was so real that I'm going to play a commercial bounty for a trailer for one minute starting now. If you want to watch a a bounty for an Amazon series, I'm going to do it. And then I'm going to watch another video after. Starting now. Called Upload. Upload. We have one extremely difficult Karen. Let me speak to a manager. Oh. What seems to be the problem? You're a moron. Uploading should be accessible for everyone. Is this the show about them living on the internet? People accountable. You can listen in on any upload. Oh my God, look at her. She's so beautiful. <laughs> Interesting. All right, thanks for watching that. Let's get back to 
my regularly scheduled programming. Um, I don't know. What do you think? What now? Another. Oh, actually, this looks good. This is a channel I've never seen before. Hmm. Yeah, I love Mr. Nightmare. It was Nightmare. Thanksgiving morning, and the first year that channel. Billy was expected to wake up with her mother and help prepare the food instead of waking up with the rest of the kids. She was 18 now, and even though she lived <laughs> at home, it was no longer about football and parades. I can't watch this channel her. anymore. I hate the way they start, and it's just like, anime girl. And she doesn't even blink. That was like almost eerie. But down out now now. Yeah, you, you can uh you can chill with that. Let's watch. Hmm. It's just the same thing with that channel every time. It's just like slow pan in anime character. Yeah, that's right. I don't know. I don't know if I don't just do more. Assassin rapper or what? I need to like start a new YouTube account to have new recommendations because these are just completely. Fucked up. What was that other channel someone suggested a few weeks ago? It's kind of like Nukes Top Fives and stuff. B I forget what the fuck it was called. Uploaded a video to his channel on July 10th, 2017. With the yeah, one C Entertainment does a lot of those. Me and a group of friends decided to go check out the tale of a haunted ghost on East Eight Mile Road in Linden, California. Listen closely. So, without further delay, let's have a look and a listen. V Tech Drew. What you just heard was a faint scream coming from what sounds to be nearby, but this was a sound that the uploader and his friends seemingly didn't notice. 
but just 30 seconds later, there's another sound that can be heard, and this one they certainly do hear. It just sounds like an animal or something. Right in here, Fed. Right here, what? This is where I seen this shit. Go. 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 This is where I seen this shit. Go. 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 What's also very interesting about that section of the video is that you can hear one of the guys in the car say that this exact area is where he has seen something before. And it's mere seconds after he says this that the weird screaming noise can be heard again. None of this video seems fake to me, and even the uploader has stated in the description that he is quite confused and creeped out by what he heard that night. If this video is authentic, then perhaps if you drive down East 8 Mile Road, You'll want to be careful. A woman named Helen Brookshaw posted a video to her personal account in December of 2020, which showcases footage from a surveillance camera which is pointed toward a graveyard that is located next door to her. As Just uh, she clicks play on the footage graveyard footage. Filmed, it is clear right away what she is freaked out by. Take a look at the footage and see for yourself. Just looks like fucking mist. This kind of weird movement happens for about a minute, and the strange ghost like figures never completely disappear from the camera sight. Unfortunately, this is the only video that Helen has ever posted on her YouTube channel, so there have not been any updates posted anywhere online. What do you guys think was caught by Helen's surveillance camera? Is there a completely mundane explanation to this, or could this be something paranormal? Ghost or not, this is definitely something you wouldn't want to see after reviewing your security camera footage. On March 16th, 2013, a YouTuber by the name of Yams uploaded a video with the title card that reads, on March 15th, me and my friend Bryson took this photo on my iPod. As you can see, the photo appears to have captured some sort of a bizarre humanoid creature wandering in the woods. It's a fucking Yam dude! says that after they took this photo, they split up to see if they can find this creature again, but this time captured on video. They also say that the footage they filmed has not been edited in any way at all. So, let's jump into it. All right, all right. So I guess I was recording in the back. And I'm recording in the front because we uh, we saw a strange thing out the window a couple hours ago, and then we tried to find it, but we couldn't. And so we took a break for a couple hours, and and now we're starting. We're gonna see if we can find it. Once well, time gets deep, that I'll tell you that thing was freaky. The last time we saw it was over there, so let's go check it out. In the woods. I always know these videos are whack when it's just like a kid filming it. It's someone walking through the fucking woods. What do you think? What? Over on the ghost subreddit, a reddit user named LibidXQ1640 shared a video titled Abandoned House I Spotlighted. The video begins with the uploader driving in his car down a dark Abandoned and House road I Spotlighted before spotting the abandoned house off to the left. As he pulls up outside of the house, it is clear that it is completely abandoned and has definitely seen some better days. 
But just as the upload and his friend in the vehicle are about to investigate further, something scares them away for good. So, what is it? Well, let's take a closer look. This is even smaller than normal vertical resolution. What the fuck? And then someone's gonna pop up. Oh, what? Go, 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 go. I looked like a mannequin. Oh, what? That does not go, look like go, a person. Go, 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 go. The moment the uploader saw this strange figure in the house, his immediate reaction was to tell his friend to drive away ASAP, which seems like a genuine reaction. But it still begs the question. Who or what was inside that abandoned house? I don't was know. Was it about a squatter? That. Was it a strange ghost or creature? Yeah, it looks like a toilet. Was You're right. It looks hoax. like a fucking toilet. Let the me know toilet what seat you think up. In the comments. The paranormies are back at it again in the newest video, and this time they are exploring and conducting an investigation at the Sinister Farm, which is said to be an incredibly creepy and haunted place. When they arrive at the farm, it is already dark and gloomy outside, and they have only flashlights to rely on in order to see things. They begin to look around the outside of the house, but they miss something genuinely terrifying in the top window that appears and disappears just as quickly. Take a look. This place, all the glass is shattered and stuff. Uh, I'm not sure, probably. I don't know which one though. There's a couple ghost hunting guys in the cow video one. So it's gotta be that window. Maybe that window, and barn. Upstairs, Shine the light back here. A couple of minutes later, they are inside of the farmhouse now and are making an attempt to communicate with any potential spirits in the house. One of the men asks the spirit to say the word farm if they are in the room. Say the word he farm. He hears a voice and then asks, who are you? The response he gets is utterly chilling. Yeah. If that was you, can you say farm? What? Who are you? Demon. demon? That is a clear demon. Yeah, I heard that too. So watch the end of the video. One of the crew members is in the upstairs area of the farmhouse and is looking around the incredibly quiet and eerie room, when all of a sudden, the room is no longer as silent as a mouse. Boy. Johnny. Did you hear that? What was that? I heard something. It was this light bulb, dude. A light bulb. Look. Oh my god. That wasn't already there? No. group is just about ready to leave not long after, understandably so, but before they can, they are given one last scare. Is someone breaking white bulbs in the, the next house. room? Yeah, this came in there. <clears throat> and then, let's uh... Table tipping. Yeah, I kinda wanna just show Is that it. what it's called? 
It's called Table Tipping, yeah. It is? Okay. I didn't know if it had like an official name or something. Okay, yeah, so I kind of want to set up a camera in that corner there, and I want to set up a camera either in this corner or... Stop, stop, stop. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> Dude, what was that? Yo, I used to have that exact table. My first apartment. You can take the things out from underneath and it opens up and you can put like a middle piece in and it becomes what? a bigger table. The Sinister Farm is undoubtedly one of the creepiest farms I've seen in a while on the internet. And it's a good thing that the Paranormies didn't get harmed. It was actually my table. They fucking stole it. Let's just hope that if they do come back for another video, they are not going to be harmed by these spirits. Dude, what was that? And that was five scary videos that will keep you awake all <laughs> night. I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you the did, rolling table. Then subscribe for more. Right, here's a link to that video if you want to check it out. All right, I'm gonna wrap it up there. Didn't realize I've been streaming for like six hours, so I'm gonna wrap it up. I got a few other things I need to do. Thank you guys for hanging out. I'll probably be around tomorrow at some point, maybe late tomorrow, tomorrow night or something like that. But uh, yeah, thanks for hanging out, everybody. And I will see you soon. Take care of yourselves. And um, hopefully we can finish up some Elden Ring. Move on to something else. But currently has me uh, pretty f fascinated. So I'm going to be playing a lot of Elden Ring. So thanks for hanging out, everybody. Thanks for coming by and chatting. I appreciate it. Like I said, I'll probably be back around tomorrow, if not. We'll see you the day after. Thanks for hanging out, everybody. There we go. All right. Thanks again. Till next time. I just saw another video I want to watch. I'll just save it for next time. Let me put that in that. I forgot I have a whole playlist of videos I've been meaning to watch. We'll do that next time. Things I've been putting to the side. All right. Now I'm really leaving. Later, guys.